Dave Sales has known these waters all his life. We like to think we know what there is to know about spider crabs, but in actual fact we know very little. So what do you think is going on down there now, these huge piles of them? What's well, it's part of the mating process. Yeah. They always come in very close to the shore this time of the year, and they'll go soft, change their shells, mate, and then they move off again. And they're a bit like a thief in the night. One day they're, they're not here, and the next day they are, and it's exactly the same when they move out. They're quite odd looking, aren't they? They are quite That's odd spooky. looking. Some of them, you know, almost six foot across. They're six foot across? Yeah. Uh, Apparently the spider crabs here are six foot across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit. You know what fishermen are like. They, they, put, they fire up and put their arms and claws at you, and you sort of stand back a bit. These monsters command hefty prices on the continent, but in Britain we can hardly be bothered with them. Even my diving companions, who regularly forage for their dinner, aren't keen. So why don't you eat spider crabs? There's too much else down there. You look at a spider crab, you think, it's fiddly. You've got a big edible crab next to it. I'll take that instead. But spider crabs could be even more delicious. Yeah, they could be. I've never tried one, so... You could be convinced. I could be convinced. Dave reckons our best chance of seeing the undersea orgy is on the reef just 50 yards off the beach. Diving must be the one sport where getting your kit on is more exciting yeah. than getting it off. But you always want to do it quickly. I'm buddying up with Eli, so before we go in, we take some time checking out each other's equipment. That's my kit. We'll get it on and we'll do a quick buddy check once we've got it on. Cheers, right. Okay. Okay. At first, the reef seems completely deserted. But on closer inspection, there's clear evidence that a mass of spider crabs has been this way. Broken bits of molted shell, legs and claws are scattered everywhere. It must have been fun, but the party appears to be over. Eventually, we come across a small group of hardcore party animals. It seems a bit unfair to break up the last orgy on the reef, so we leave them to it. But we definitely want something for the pot, so we round up a few stragglers who seem to have had their fill. Four big ones should do us all for lunch. A lovely cock spider crab, you see that is not quite the six foot we were talking about, but <laughs> when you see that, you, you, you get getting half a three, you see, yeah. don't you? So if you get one twice that size, I'm not quite telling stories, am I? <laughs> not quite. I'm impressed. I mean, people say they're fiddly, but, but there's going to be plenty oh, of meat. Oh, a lot in of there. meat in these claws. A lot of meat. And, and in all body, these claws. All in the base and of the in body. here, there's, you know, that is, that is a superb crab. You, but you, you get as much white meat off that as you would off a good brown crab. Oh, yes, you would. Back on the quay in West Bay, we start the crab cook-up. Fifteen minutes in boiling water and they're done. Then everybody gets cracking. I'm making a spicy crab sauce for linguine. A little garlic is sweated in olive oil and a finely sliced red chilli is thrown in. Next, a couple of pounds of yellow cherry tomatoes, skinned and chopped. Aren't these tomatoes an incredible colour? They are lovely. The and very the smell is delicious, isn't it? They're very, very sweet. Once the tomatoes are cooked, the crab meat's piled in and heated through. Chopped fresh chives add an oniony bite and a nice fleck of green. Then the sauce is ready to be tossed up with a mountain of linguine. For me. Oh. Yeah. That is gorgeous. Oh. So sweet. I don't think you're going to get me making this next time we go out on the boat. You all have to chip in. No woman thing, though. <laughs> Would we do that, Eli? Yes. Do you think, do you think divers are sexist? Oh, yes. Oh, no, not, really? not, at all. not at all. No. Yes, you are. We would train them if we thought that. I'm <laughs> starving. <laughs> there is some more. That's what I like to hear. I think I've made a few crabby converts. But there's no time to crow because back at River Cottage, it's showtime. I certainly don't want to be mean with the jam, but with this slightly runny consistency, 
I'm a little bit anxious about edge trickle. Immaculate presentation is vital if my Victoria sponge sandwich is going to be a contender. The dusting of caster sugar has to be just right. Barbara's warned me that too much is seen by the judges as an attempt to disguise surface flaws. Enough. I think you've got to know when to stop. I think that looks okay and I'm going to go and take care of the veg. I'm tempted by some of the individual classes in the schedule, but there's also a category that calls for six different vegetables on a tray 12 inches by 12 inches. Now this could be the perfect showcase for the River Cottage harvest. But the right combination is going to be crucial. How can I fail? It's a vegetable Picasso. Show day dawns and I'm off with my entries to Beminster Public Hall where Barbara and Roy are already preparing for their assault on the cup. I'm told there's a bit of a frenzy as the 10 o'clock deadline approaches. Absolutely right. <laughs> Morning. nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the competition may be fierce, but on the surface it smiles and helpful hints all round. I'm yeah. a bit nervous. I'm Don't nervous worry, before. everybody's a bit nervous when they start. No matter how impressive your entry, if it doesn't conform exactly to the schedule, it's out. Excuse me, I'm just putting this in for number 25. Is it alright just to sort of... It should be on the paper, really. I'm worried enough about my bulb fennel but if I had a bean that long, I certainly wouldn't want to go out on a technicality. Along with my six veg on a tray, my last vegetable entry is a pair of matched marrows. Size isn't everything. Do you enter often here? Yes. Well, she's won the cup 25 she, times. Okay. She hasn't. Go on, Have you, can, could you tell me some of your secrets? I'll show you. I haven't any secrets. Up against a 25 times winner in Homecraft, I'm in need of reassurance. You've got your pot that's a little bit over four. But it's said in, it's in the Excuse WA. me, I've been asked if you can leave. The judging's about to start. Ah. Yeah, that's us told off, isn't it? <laughs> It's out of my hands now, and in the lap of the gods, or as they're known round here, judges. It just says pinks four. No, or is that intended to mean four blooms or four stems? Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Looks good. Good taste, is it? No. No. It's 2.30 and competitors are finally allowed back in. Judgment time. Mm, I love the smell of fresh tomatoes. Oh dear. No prize for my so-called marrows. I guess they were just a bit too weedy. I thought my lovely bulb fennel was a certain winner, but Mr Smith, the vegetable judge, found fault. Now, I thought that was a bit special, to be honest. Well, uh, it would have been. It was very good, but you should leave the leaves on. If I'd left more stalk on, hmm. do you think I'd have got a... a yeah, you would, yeah. But, but, you know, you was against a, a very good fine exhibit here, wasn't it? That yeah. cucumber, it's yeah, big, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They've advertised a giant, a really giant one, and like that. I said, I'm not going to have it, but now I think I will now have seen them. <laughs> it's a prize. It's not first, it's not second. But it's a prize. Flushed with success, I check up on Roy's progress. Magnificent cauliflowers. Best I can grow. How did you get on with your onions? I had first for the ones passing through a three inch ring. First for my pickling ones. Oh yeah, they're lovely. Second for my onions from seed. Well, I should have thought right. they were very good there. Well, I should have thought perhaps they were worth a prize. That is a fantastic bean. Good enough. 
That's the longest I've ever, it's probably the longest in the world. Is that the longest you've ever grown? Mm, yes. Really? Yes, yeah. What about the cup? No? No, second. Second? Yeah. Oh, Roy. Good, good huh? Roy's disappointment is all the keener because for 20 minutes he thought he'd won. Then a controversial recount and Roy was pasted over by his arch rival Ted Smith. To have your hopes built up so high and you think that you've accomplished something that you spent years working towards and then it's gone. Now, what about my home craft entries? <laughs> First prize. My raspberry jam, that's fantastic. Okay. Goodness me. It's two out of three. <laughs> Hello there, how are you? You beat me at the sponge. <laughs> I'm amazed. What about this chutney then here? I haven't looked at the chutney yet. Shall we go together then? Oh, look here. Chutney has a good flavour, but needs time to mature. What did I tell you? We can't you... argue with that, can we? <laughs> Yours was only make... five days old. Yes. If we enter them both next year, we'll get a first and a second. So the challenge is all for next year, then, you? Definitely. You up for that? Definitely. See you there. Well, it's been a great result in the home craft, but there's definitely room for improvement on the veg front. I think I'm going to invest my 85p prize money in a couple of Roy's giant bean seeds for next year's show.